Right, joining us right now to talk markets and trade is the CEO of Deloitte, Kathy Engelbert. Kathy, it's good to see you. Great to Thanks see you. Thanks so much man. for joining us. What do you see when you speak with corporate executives today in terms of these policies out of Washington? Well, number one, they're all looking for sustained economic growth. And uh, tax reform, regulatory reform helps them. Infrastructure will probably help a little bit. And the, yeah, you saw wage increases, one-time bonuses, uh, investments in facilities. So are they looking for a little more certainty and stability? Absolutely. Uh, but obviously trade is complicating things for them. Uh, I think what, you know we have 36 million of our jobs here in America are very import-export driven. Uh, it, it, trade is 27 percent of our GDP, so a little stability around right, this sure. topic would really help. Well, Gary B., I haven't been able to find one person to say, yes, this trade tension is probably going to take a, a, a cut from economic growth expectations. I'm just, people are not going there, uh, even yeah. though there's all of this worry. I mean, look, I think any kind of trade tariffs are going to be bad. I mean, it's, it's a tax. Yeah. I mean, as simple as that. It's got to cut into the economy. But I think what we've seen, and, and maybe you've seen this too, Kathy, and we talked about this before, Trump puts his, his big chess piece forward initially and then kind of ramps down. Yeah. Do you think this is all going to be watered down? You know, in the long run? I think in any trade agreement, negotiation is key. I think one of the important things will be is as we look at American companies' fair access to 95% of the consumers who are outside the U.S. So this is a chess game, yeah. but it also is a big balance on negotiating. I, I, a question from your perspective as a CEO of Deloitte. For your company, is all this change and uncertainty good for you? Or would you rather have a more stable? I, I know how it impacts businesses because yes. they can't plan. I'm curious for is is it good or bad for your business? I think uh, a company confidence is, is very important for our business. That right. companies are confident. They're all transforming. There's so mm -hmm. much technology emerging. That's why the intellectual property argument is so mm -hmm. important to get right because every company is becoming a technology company, digital transformation. So all of that is good. But that's all happening notwithstanding policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kathy, you talk about the importance of sustained economic growth, but we're now seeing this $1.3 trillion spending bill, which is not good for sustained long economic. I mean, it's, it's, this is long-term deficits, debt, red ink, very bad news for the long term. How does that affect how companies feel today? I mean, is that too far in the future, or do you see that having an impact on how companies are thinking about investment and where they're going to invest? I think companies worry macro about the debt and the deficits, but as they're looking at the execution of their strategy over the next three to five years, they have to invest heavily, and that's why tax and regulatory reform is helping them with confidence to do that. That capital sitting on the sidelines deployed, the, the repatriation of foreign earnings, deployed. So they're, they're macro, they're worried about debt and deficits, but kind of as they look at ex execution of their strategy, they kind of like what they see around confidence and the ability to bring back those earnings, invest them in U.S. businesses, U.S. workers, U.S. facilities. In terms of policy, what do they want to see next? Excluding trade, potential tariffs, uh, what comes out of the White House, but something that Congress can do, because Brian asked about the spending, but well, what else? Number one is infrastructure, which, as we know, is a bipartisan issue on the issue, but obviously very challenging on where do you find the money. <laughs> Again, debt. In fact, to Brian's point, on well, that there was some infrastructure money they in that spending yeah, plan, right, Dagan? A few billion in yeah. that in the <laughs> omnibus spending bill, right? So, and obviously, comprehensive immigration reform. As we look at the future of jobs and the future of work, mm -hmm. very important to get immigration reform skills funding into education. The Business Roundtable is doing some interesting things around workforce development and education. So really, as we see shifts in the American worker, very important to, to look at that as well. So, And then there's the phase two of the tax reform plan that we're expecting. The president says that he wants to make uh, the individual cuts permanent. Here's what he told a group of millennials yesterday. Millennials starting out tremendous you have a tremendous advantage now over what you had you're going to pay less taxes you have far more incentive you're going to have a lot more money left in your paycheck to spend we were at about 1.2 percent gdp we've now hit three and another three and a 3.2 and we'll see what this next quarter is that could be a good quarter uh, phase two reportedly will include individual cuts being permanent. What companies are looking for in terms of the tax side of the story? Did they get what they needed in that last tax plan to actually uh, hire more people? 
So I think they got what they needed. There was not everybody's happy, right. so there was some negotiation, obviously, here in New York City with the SALT, you know, deduction, et cetera. But I would say that the one question that CEOs are asking us today is, how long term is this? Will there be reversal of this kind of policy in 2020 or 2024 or however you look out the 10 years and make them permanent? So they are looking at the future because they're doing long term plans right now. Right. And that's where their uncertainty lies. Hey, what about this uh, New York City Councilman bill that they want to make it illegal for companies to require employees to answer work emails or calls after hours? I don't know how I would do with that. Um, <laughs> I'm always emailing everybody. <laughs> I'm fascinated with that because what are work hours, yeah. right? Yeah. What are work hours? And, and we're promoting flexibility and predictability in our 62% yeah. millennial workforce. And so work hours are not 9 to 5 or 8 to 6 or 8 to 7. Um, we actually pride ourselves on our people work at different times that are flexible for them and how they're, whether they have family issues and things like that. So I, I wouldn't even know how you implement that. I don't, lefties always float this idea. Yeah. Yeah. This comes up every, every now and then. Yeah. That's hey, it. we're not nine to five people. <laughs> Thank God. Thank you. Kathy, good to see you. Great to Thank see you. you so Thanks. Much. Kathy Engel.